Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about one of the most frustrating experiences I've had while testing Linux distributions. I'm working on a full comparison video of the most popular general purpose distros, Debian 13, Fedora, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and of course, OpenSUSE. But before I show you the full comparison, I have to share what happened with OpenSUSE's new installer, called Agama. Spoiler, it was a nightmare. If you've ever considered trying OpenSUSE, stick around. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Let's start with the first issue, the ISO. Forget about using Ventoy. I've used Ventoy for years to test Linux distros. It's simple, fast, and reliable. But with OpenSUSE Leap 16, no chance. The ISO just won't boot. At first, I thought it was my fault. Maybe the download was corrupt. Maybe my internet dropped. I downloaded the ISO twice, nearly five gigabytes each time, waited 20 minutes per download. Then I realized it wasn't me. It's just that the boot system is weird. I had to use Rufus in DD mode, and only then did Agama finally start. Right there, first red flag. If a distro that calls itself general purpose doesn't work with a standard tool like Ventoy, something's off. But okay, I thought. These things happen. Maybe the installer will make up for it. Before we dive into Agama itself, let's take a moment to think about what a modern installer should be, especially for a general purpose distro. In my view, it has to handle a wide range of users. On one end, you have the person coming from Windows who just wants to click Next three times and be done. On the other, you have power users who want full control over partitions, file systems, and bootloaders. The challenge is building something that's simple for those who want simplicity, but powerful for those who need control. Take the installer from Void Linux. Void isn't a distro for everyone. It's a rolling release aimed at advanced users, but its installer is a gem. Clean, logical, powerful without being chaotic. It asks the right questions in the right order, direct and efficient. Or look at Debian's installer. It's basic, yes, but every screen has a purpose. You always know where you are and what's going on. Now keep those examples in mind while I tell you what a gamma is like. A gamma is the opposite of everything I just described. It's confusing, illogical, chaotic. First impression? Oh wow, nice! Modern interface, animated sidebar, colorful buttons. It looks almost like a web app. And technically, it is. But behind this modern shell is a system that doesn't know what it wants to be. My case was this. I have two drives, one internal with important data and one fast external SSD connected via USB-C. I wanted to install OpenSUSE on the external drive but install the bootloader on the internal one. Seems simple, right? Agama made it unnecessarily difficult. At first, it defaulted to wiping my internal drive. That's absurd. A new user who doesn't double check every step could accidentally wipe their whole system. That's the first major problem. Agama isn't safe for beginners. But wait, it's not friendly for advanced users either. I opened the dropdown, deselected everything, and manually chose the external drive. And then I found myself in a jungle of settings. Overlapping options with no clear logic. Swap partitions appearing on the wrong drive. I selected do nothing for the internal drive and it still wanted to put the swap there. I literally spent 20 minutes just trying to understand what the installer was doing. And I'm not a beginner. I've used Linux for years. I know what LVM is, I know BTRFS, I know EFI setups, but with Agama I felt lost. The problem is that the interface tries to hide complexity instead of managing it. Click Advanced, and you get dumped into a wall of settings with no clear explanations. And the alert system? It doesn't warn you immediately. You have to click Install to find out what's wrong. Why not tell me beforehand? I read the installation report three times. Three, because I was afraid it would wipe my system. With Debian or Fedora, I just review it once and install with peace of mind. And here comes the real paradox of Agama. It's not user-friendly for beginners, nor for experienced users. It manages to frustrate both. For beginners, it's dangerous. Default settings could destroy your data, and the interface doesn't clearly show what's happening. For advanced users, it's confusing. You have to click all over the place for basic tasks, and you never feel confident about what will happen. This is what I call fake modernity. They thought, let's make it pretty, with windows, animations, fancy buttons, but if the end result is something unmanageable, I don't care how pretty it looks. A modern interface should simplify complexity, not hide it behind design fluff. 
Look at elementary OS. That installer is modern and elegant, but every step is clear, or pop OS. Minimalist, but efficient. Now let me go more technical and explain why Agama, from a UX UI perspective, is fundamentally broken. First, the hierarchy of information is a disaster. Critical messages like failed to calculate a storage layout are tucked away in small banners, while the user's attention is drawn to big configuration boxes. In proper UX design, critical errors should dominate the interface until they're resolved. It should show a modal overlay, center screen, blocking all progress until you fix the issue. Second, it violates the principle of error prevention. Jakob Nielsen calls it one of the fundamentals of usability. Agama does the opposite. It lets you configure impossible setups and only tells you it won't work afterward. You can pick options that result in cannot calculate a valid storage setup and it gives you no live feedback to help you build a valid configuration. Third, there's no affordance or immediate feedback. Dropdowns don't clearly show what each option does. When you select Use NVMe 01-23847GIB, it's not obvious what the implications are. Important consequences are hidden behind nested menus. For example, content will be kept versus new partitions will be created. They look independent but are mutually exclusive in many cases. Fourth, it's mentally inconsistent. The UI mixes two paradigms, wizard-based with linear steps in a sidebar and dashboard-based where everything's visible at once. This creates cognitive dissonance. You're not sure if you should follow a sequence or freely explore settings. Fifth, the information architecture is a mess. The partition list dumps a flood of technical details all at once. Controller names, partition flags, file systems, with no logical grouping. There's no progressive disclosure. Instead of revealing complexity step by step, it throws everything at you at once. Sixth, it violates the principle of reversibility. Don Norman stresses how crucial it is to allow users to undo actions. Agama says, there is one destructive action plan but doesn't offer a clear way to preview or undo it. You basically have to start over from scratch. Seventh, critical warnings are vague. One message said affecting KDE Neon. What does that even mean? Is it harmless, catastrophic, who knows? There's no clear preview of what will happen to your system. Eighth, visual design problems, low contrast for key info, inconsistent spacing between related elements, and poor use of color. Green is used to mark new partitions even when they're potentially destructive, misleading at best. Ninth, it violates recognition over recall. You're forced to remember what each choice meant instead of being shown a clear overview. Your configuration is scattered across dropdowns with no cohesive summary. In short, Agama suffers from feature creep. Too much power, exposed too early, with no structural organization. It's the opposite of progressive enhancement. Instead of starting with a clean core and adding complexity as needed, it hits you with everything all at once. The result is an interface that fails both for beginners and for experts. Exactly what I was pointing out earlier, and this time with design principles to back it up. So yeah, I just had to say it clearly. Agama is a disaster, and OpenSUSE deserves better, much better. Leap 16 is a solid distro. Yast used to be a powerful configuration system. Oh wait, it's gone now. Well, that's something we'll cover in my full comparison video. But the bottom line is, if the installer drives users away before they even get to the desktop, it's failing its job. Old Yast, for all its flaws, was at least predictable. You knew what it was doing. I really hope the community feedback helps improve Agama. In the meantime, if you're planning to try OpenSUSE, you might want to wait until Agama gets sorted out. Thanks for watching.